Hello everyone, Elias5891 here with another Katane module tutorial. Uh, this time, doing something a little different, we're going to cover a few neaties. Uh, starting with this one here, which is Motion Sense. Uh, as the name implies, it senses motion. Uh, the idea is to not move the bomb so much as to trigger this particular module. Uh, you'll notice, when I'm not doing anything, not really interacting with the bomb, or I'm just clicking modules, it doesn't really do anything, it just kind of sits there. But when I make the bomb have motion, when I turn it, you'll notice the gauge starts to build up, go a little faster, builds up faster, gives me a little warning when it hits a certain certain level, and then slowly calms itself down into the green zone. So it's in the danger level, we could let it calm down for a second. Maybe spin a little slower than normal. And that's how this module works. It has, like I said, 90 seconds on the timer when it activates. So you've got to keep from going super fast for a little while. Uh, now this is the PORQ training mission version. The timer, I believe, is different on a standard bomb. Um, and aside from just the obvious rotating the bomb itself, putting it down, picking it up, both of those do trigger motion as well. Uh, now if you do happen to get a strike on this one, it's not going to keep striking you for constantly being above the threshold for, you know, a couple seconds at a time. Once you hit a strike for hitting the threshold here on the right, it'll, at the normal rate that it decreases, it'll decrease back down to when it starts beeping, which is about 80%, like I said and it won't go higher, it'll just keep draining regardless of how it's moving. So you can't get too many strikes at once. I'll demonstrate. So I got a strike, notice no matter what I was doing, until it started beeping, got back to that point, it was still draining even though I was still moving the bomb. Uh, so you can't... So you're safe for a little while after you get a strike. But it's important after that to you know keep it calm afterwards. Uh, and that's motion sense. It's a very fun, uh, fun module to explode. Uh, the second one we're going to cover is filibuster. Uh, filibuster is an example of the title of this game living up to its name. Keep talking and nobody explodes. Uh, we'll dig into this one. Uh, but for this one, the idea is you have to keep talking. You have to talk. The microphone has to pick up volume, and you have to do it for a long enough time slash loud enough volume. Now you'll notice as I'm talking, this little number here on the filibuster goes up. When I go quiet, it drops down. Um, right now, since I, since I was quiet when I uh, first started mentioning to take a look, there we go. Figured I'd let you see a strike. Um, based on your microphone's abilities, uh, as you see, mine's fluctuating from like one to, I think I may have hit, barely hit into the double digits a couple times. Um, whereas if I get right up to my mic and talk super close, it's probably going to be a little loud, so I apologize for your ears, but I wanted to demonstrate what could happen if you're right next to the microphone. And you'll notice when I did that, it went all the way up to 100. The idea is you want to keep it above a certain level for the extent of the 25 seconds or so that it uh, works. Uh, my understanding of it is that it gives you the little beep, beep, beep at first to let you know it's about to start. That it starts your 25 second timer. And after, it looks like about 4 or 5 seconds, then it goes beep, beep again. It says armed. And from there, you have to stay out of the red zone for or you can't go into the red zone for longer than three seconds at a time. Now, as I said, my microphone doesn't pick up well. By default, for it to be into the green zone, you have to have a volume or a uh, activity level of 25. As you can see, even when I'm talking normally, I'm not getting anywhere close to that. Uh, so you can modify that range. I did it for mine. Uh, you can change both the threshold of what's going to count as valid versus what's going to count as invalid. You can also change the number of seconds 
for which it will be like, oh, well, you've been quiet too long. That's going to be a strike. There we go. Uh, so let me actually back out, and I'll show you how you can change that if, like me, you have a, a little bit of trouble with this. Let's go ahead and we'll pull this up. There's the motion since we covered. Here's filibuster. Uh, you'll notice that it does mention here you've got a mic threshold, uh, which is a value you can adjust for your microphone, 0 to 100. Failure threshold, that's how many seconds of failing a mic check causes a strike. Defaults to 3, haven't changed that. Uh, but here in the game itself, if you go to the menu and show mod settings folder, I'll go ahead and pull that up on the screen for you guys to see. Uh, but that gives you several settings, including the key one here, filibuster settings. And here in filibuster settings, uh, you'll see it just has a mic threshold and a failure threshold. Notice mine was set to 2, so that even my quieter talking would register. Uh, failure threshold was still at 3. It happens. Sometimes you get a little quiet for a second or two. Uh, but if filibuster is one you want to play with, definitely tweak that to what feels comfortable to the level you like it at, and, and run with it there. So that's filibuster. Uh, we got one more we're going to cover this time, and that is HTTP response. Uh, this one's a little interesting in that it actually works a little bit more like a standard module. You got a little bit of work to do with this one. Uh, this does potentially require edge work, which is uh, not something you get to say for a lot of needies. So let's grab that. We have no batteries, which is going to make this a little bit uh, less interesting. So you know what? Let's uh, reset this. I want one that does have batteries. So we're going to try that again. HTTP, HTTP response. Uh, we want to make sure we have at least one battery. That'll work. Uh, we have exactly one, so not the most interesting case, but that works. One battery. Oh, and there it goes. We'll, we'll get a strike on this first one. Not a big deal. Uh, one battery and one holder. Uh, ports and indicators don't matter. Uh, the serial does, though. 7H4Z Echo 8. All right, the way this works is you've got a keypad, 0 through 9, a display, and this display is going to give you an HTTP response. Now, in some cases, it will give you a remote status, uh, and other times it'll give you a local one. Uh, for those who don't know quite what this is, most people have seen what's called a 404 page online, or a not found page. That's one example of an HTTP response. You've got 403, which is forbidden, 402, which is a payment required. There's lots of others, some of which are intentionally punny or weird. I'm a teapot. But these are all responses you can get from a remote connection. Conversely, you also have some local statuses, uh, which for the most part are just things you'd see here on the bomb. So what you're going to do is you're going to look up this one. This will be the abbreviation, not the full name, so PROC. Uh, we look here, here's PROC, it's short for proceeding. That is a remote status. If the answer is a remote status, you just send the response listed in the table. So in this case, 102 and that'll deactivate the uh, the module for now. Remote status is very easy, just send the response as it is. Local statuses are a little more interesting. With those, you're going to take the number of batteries, which in this case is one. Oh, we'll get to do it here with blue. You're going to take the sum of the numeric digits and the serial number, so add up all the numbers in the serial number. 7 plus 4 plus 8 gives me 19. We're going to multiply those together, which is still 19. Anytime I get a local status, I'm going to add that number to my response before I put it in. So I have blue. Blue is normally 701, but we're going to add 19 to that. That makes it 720, which is what it wants us to put in. Um, on the off chance, as it says here in the note, on the off chance that your response after you've added your batteries times your numbers uh, exceeds 999, 
then you're going to subtract 999. Don't subtract the thousand, don't use the last three digits. Easy to do because a lot of modules use that method. But with this one, you need to subtract 999. Uh, we'll let one more pop up, I think. Probably should come up here in just a second. No? Maybe? Please? There it is. Done. That's an exciting one. Uh, done. Done. However, it is a local one. 906 plus 19 gives us 925. Now, if you play with this when it's off, you get a strike the first time you hit a button. So don't play around with the keypad unless the module's active. Uh, that's it for this one. Uh, that covers our motion sense, our filibuster, and our HTTP response. Uh, three uh, potential needies that you might have if you decide to play with them. Uh, but that's it for me. This has been Elias. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, as always, leave them in the comment section below. Um, and until next time, thank you for watching. Have a great one. Don't explode. Bye.